Today, I am sharing with you 20 of the best tools that any DIY crafter should have in their stash. Let's get to it. Of course, you know that you want to have some really good cutting tools. One of my favorites would be miter shears. I love these. I recently just used these to cut the frame that went around one of my signs. And what makes this so fantastic? Not only will they cut through like wood, which let's face it, all of us would love to be able to have something on hand and not always have to go out and use like a fancy expensive saw. So these can cut through like your popsicle sticks, your dowels, your smaller pieces like that. But I use these to cut the trim to go around a sign. And because of how you can angle them, the miter shear part of this, I was able to get that 45 degree angle super easy and it made framing a sign really quick. Another pair of my favorite would be these angled shears. These are by JC Jet. You're able to get through something that's hard and it just slices through just like butter. It does the same thing when you're cutting through wood. Nice, chunky, thick blade, easy because of the spring in here. These are just great to have on hand if you are cutting through anything other than paper. Okay, so one of the absolute best tools I can talk about would be zip snips. Not only will the crafter love them, but anybody else in the household will probably come and try to snatch these up because at least that's the case in my house. My kids love to use these. My husband loves to use these. These are fantastic. It's a rotary blade that has this flat edge so you can just run it across. I mean, seriously, these things are fantastic. Last year, I mentioned these tiny little shears that I think everyone should have. You can actually get them in like a set of four, which is what I have because I tend to always misplace everything, including my scissors. I love these for any time you're gonna do more something like a fussy cut or you have like a little thread, things like that. It's just nice to have some tiny little shears and these are by Singer, I love them. But one of my favorite brands for scissors, shears, whichever one you wanna call them would be Tim Holtz. I cannot say enough good things about his because look, First of all, how much handle space you have. They are super comfortable. This is not only wide, it's like super pliable. So it's soft in the hand. Now I've had these ones for years. I really love them. I think that they are great to have, but my absolute favorite ones that I think everyone should own would be these nine, I think they're nine and a half inch. Look at the length of that blade. Can I just tell you the number of times that long blade comes in handy? Again though, with this really flexible handle, super com comfortable for your hand. I mean, these things are so good. The last thing I think everyone should have as far as cutting tools would be a paper trimmer. Now, there are a ton of different paper trimmers out there and they're all basically gonna do the same thing. But the reason why I love this Fisker one is because all of your lines, numbers and everything are actually under the plastic, so they're never gonna rub away. And that means this thing's gonna last longer, one-time investment, use it for years, this thing is really good. And if you don't have a good paper trimmer, this is the one to get. Everyone needs to have good tools when it comes to painting. And that includes some really good paint brushes. Now, my absolute favorite would be these. And you can tell they are very well loved. They come in a pack of two. I actually use the same brand or same style of brush when I Mod Podge, but I have had these for years and they are holding up great. I just recently gifted myself two brand new ones. And let me show you, besides the fact that I am a messy painter, I mean, look how good these look. So worth it. Another thing that I absolutely think everyone needs to have are silicone mats. It's just one, it helps you to not be wasteful by always having to put down paper. And two, they wash up beautifully. I put paint directly on these when I go to paint. I paint on top of these. I also use them anytime I'm using like a glue, whether it's a hot glue, a wood glue, it doesn't matter because the glue just peels off. Now I am gonna tell you, you do get what you pay for. So my favorite ones are the Shore Bonder ones. That's all of these. Love them because they are thick, which means they are going to last. However, I get not everyone's budget is the same, so I've been trying out some different ones, but I want you to see the thickness level here. Compare, can you see how much thicker the Sherbonder is compared to this other brand? Now, I like this, I will use it. I like the size of it, but you cannot beat this at all. 
Let me tell you a little secret. I used to wash all of this by hand. Scrubbing them out in my bathtub would take forever, dreaded it. But now I toss these into the washing machine with a little bit of laundry soap and they are clean lickety split. That is the best thing I can share with you. Get you some silicone mats and wash them in your washing machine. If you haven't used spray paint at all, can I ask you, do you have a spray tent? And if not, why? You need a spray tent, trust me. It is one of the best things you can ever, ever have. Pop it up when you wanna use it. I actually like to use a Lazy Susan inside because it makes it so much easier to just spin your project and paint. Trust me, I have yet to meet anybody that has gotten a spray tent and thought, huh, I wish I didn't have this. Oh, no, no, no. They're always like, why did I wait? Do you know what this is? This thing is called a lifesaver. Okay, not really, but trust me, you need one of these. If you spray paint, this just clips around this rim of your sprayed bottle, sprayed can, it's a can, like this. I'm not gonna push it because I don't need to spray paint inside my house. But once you do this, it pushes down on the nozzle. Your hand no longer gets messy. It's super comfortable. You're not getting the cramped finger. Like this thing is like 10 bucks. Trust me, the investment is worth it. And you just pop it from can to can. It's a one-time purchase. Now let's talk about a few of the handheld tools I think everyone needs to have in their stash, starting with a good stapler. Now this one is by Sherbonder. It's called the Trigger Fire. I absolutely love it, but let me tell you why. First, you have this little knob right here. If you set it to normal, then you can, let me show you, staple like normal. Pretty easy to understand, right? But then you can turn it. If this is hard for you to do with one hand, that would allow you to then use both of your hands. It will lock into place. Then using this little lever, one finger, look how easy that is. This thing is fantastic and everyone needs to have a good stapler. One of the questions I get asked the most is what is my favorite glue gun? And that would absolutely be the cordless detail tip. Now this is the one that they did in collaboration with Len Lilly. This is their regular coloring. They are the same thing. So it doesn't actually matter which one you get. You can definitely tell that this has been really well loved. It comes with its own stand. You pop it on here. It heats up. You can use it for two minutes without it being on its stand before you have to replace it. If for some reason you don't want to use it with a stand and you want to have it be corded, you can take the cord and plug it into the bottom and it will be a corded glue gun. I cannot tell you how many different ways I love this because I think everyone just needs to own this. It's a must have. But I just got myself a brand new glue gun. This is a very close second run to that cordless detail tip. But you do need a battery and the battery is not sold with it. So this can add an expense to it if you're not ready. I get that. But if you are, I'm telling you, lock, load, and go. My husband borrowed this to take it to work. He decorated his door for Christmas. His co-workers were excited to see it. This thing was a hit all the way around. I don't think my husband's going to use another glue gun of mine ever again. This is the only one he wants. I don't blame him. It is so good. Another tool I think everyone should have is a Dremel because it's such a multi-faceted, multi-purpose tool. We'll go with that. It drills, it sands, it engraves. It, I mean, it basically washes the dishes in your sink. One of the most fun things I personally have done with this is I used it to engrave on my kids' ornaments that they get for Christmas because I wanted to make sure that it was in my handwriting that kept it a little bit more special. And I just think it's really neat that there's a tool you can get that will do that plus all the other things that it can do. It's not just the engraver. I know I've said so many of these tools you must have, but listen up because this is one that I know you are going to love. This is a heat gun. If you don't have one, you need one. If you don't have this one, let me explain to you why this is the best one. For the price, other heat guns that have a similar function cost two, three times more money. So you are getting such a good heat gun. You can lay it fat, flat like this if you want to. It has a temperature control. That is probably my favorite feature. And then you have two speeds as well. I cannot say enough good things about this heat gun. I will never buy another heat gun. This is it. So let's talk about a few many but mighty tools that I think you would love to have in your stash, starting with this little bitty vacuum. 
This thing is great. It's USB charged and once it's charged, it is ready to go to clean up all those little wood pieces, glitter, whatever little messes you make. And because it's so tiny, it doesn't take up much space and it's great to keep near your crafting area. You can just turn it on, clean up your stuff. I originally learned about these from Courtney over on Creative on the Cheap. She has a ladybug one, so you can get super cute ones. It doesn't have to be like this, but apparently I'm boring and this one worked for me. Another tool I think everyone needs to have would be wood clamps. Specifically, these little mini wood clamps. They are so great. I actually shared these last year. Still love them, use them. But these micro ones are another winner. Why is it when things are small, they are so much cuter, but not only are these cute, they work, which is what we need them to do. So look how wide you can go. And then of course you can go in, but look at that. Mini and micro wood clamps, such a great thing to have in your stash. You will use them more than you even realize. You saw this coming. You probably saw it a mile away because I get asked all the time, if you're to get a Cricut, which Cricut would you get? And hands down, it is the Cricut Explorer 3. I recently just had a friend ask me which one she should get. This is it. This is an investment. It is not cheap. And I would never try to have you get something that you're not wanting or you cannot afford. But if you've been considering it and you're wanting to get something, this is the one. This is my favorite. This is my love. This is, this is it. I have also mentioned getting a heat press last year. I told you about the mini heat press. If you have this, which it is on sale all the time, it is fantastic. It is still my number one heat press that I recommend because you can do small little things to really large things. Just know that the larger ones are going to take you more time. It is so good. If you're ready to step it up, then I would suggest getting a nine by nine one. I love this one the best because I mainly like to do t-shirts. I just think it's a really fun thing to do. And this tends to be the perfect size for that. If you have a larger design, you just move it around. Now, if you can't tell, this is the heat press too. I find that you can get this one on sale more often. I haven't found the need to get the three yet. A couple of punches that I think would be great to have in your stash would first be the crocodile. Now, this one is my absolute favorite because not only do you have the grommet part on the top, you have two different size hole punches, which honestly, that's the part that I use the most. But I do know that there are plenty of people that use this top grommet part. This is great and it can go through like metal, wood, things like that. I mean, it is like heavy duty. I've had this one for years. I don't even think they make the pink handled ones anymore. Another punch that I think is so fun to have would be this slotted punch. This is normally used for like lanyards, but it is the perfect size for like your half inch, five eighths inch ribbon. Absolutely love this. It's one of those tools you wouldn't think you needed, but as soon as you have it, you will use it all the time. The last thing I think everyone needs to make sure they have is good lighting, especially the older I get, the more important I realize how important it is. Now, when I'm filming a video, I always have lights over the head that make it really easy for me to see while I'm working. That's not practical for everybody. I did get the Cricut lamp. I paid for this with my own money because I wanted to test it out. I'm not going to lie. I love the lamp. I don't love the price, but I love the lamp. It moves really smoothly. You can get exactly where you want it. It is great. I did try another one off of Amazon. It's cheaper. It's not as good as the Cricut lamp, but you do save some money. Honestly, if you have a great suggestion for lighting, we would love to know. You can leave that in the comments because... It doesn't matter what you get as long as you have something. I just think good lighting is important. Now the question is, do you have a favorite tool? I would love to know. I went ahead and I picked out another video for you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.